Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Randy Ryan, President of Shattered State College. Thank you for being here today and for taking time to participate in this important event. I would like to thank the Diversity Committee, the faculty and staff and students at Shattered State College who made this possible. I would, excuse me, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Nisham for his involvement and guidance in helping to develop this event. And for all the, the students and their teachers from our local schools, welcome. Today you have come together to honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. King's life and work influenced the civil rights movement in this country and around the world. Using peaceful demonstration as their tool, Dr. King and countless followers led this nation to pursue his dream of a country where his children and your children will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I think if Dr. King were here today, he would say that there is much work left to be done and challenge each of us to reflect on our lives and find within ourselves the will to be a positive force of change for our nation. In Dr. King's honor today, I challenge all of us to live our lives free from prejudice, to celebrate our diversity, and to seek the highest level of inclusion to make our great nation a better place. Again, welcome, thank you for being here. And now I would like to introduce Breck Brixis. Breck, thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Brett Brixis, Community Service Director at Northwest Community Action Partnership. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here on Martin Luther King Jr. holiday and to honor Dr. King and his work. Um, I'm not old enough to have been part of that movement, but I, I know that his work was uh, definitely instrumental in changing our world. Um, in fact, I doubt that Community Action would be uh, in in our world if it wasn't for Dr. King's work. Um, as you know, he was a civil rights activist who fought to eliminate um, legal, legal segregation and things like Jim Crow laws. In 1964 then, there was the Civil Rights Act that came, came into being. And also in 1964, there was another thing called the Community Service Block Grant that was put into effect. And the Community Service Block Grant was targeted to uh, elimination of poverty. Now, elimination of poverty was another one of Dr. King's uh, goals in life. And like I say, I think that without Dr. King, we probably would not have that Community Service Block Grant, we probably would not have community action. Uh, so I was invited here today to talk to, to everyone a little bit about Closer to Home, which is one of our projects. And it's a, a soup kitchen that we have in this community that's goal is to feed the homeless and the needy. And it, it's more than just a soup kitchen. It's a, it actually is set up like a little home environment so that people can come and get in out of the, uh, out of the heat in the summertime and out of the cold in the wintertime. It's not, uh, not really a shelter. We can't do that or we can't offer that level of service, but we do... Uh, give people just a little bit of a break from, from those conditions that they live in. Um, you know, when you don't have a home, things like uh, a hot day can really wear on you. So it's, it's nice that we have that in our community. It, it came into being uh, as a collaboration with uh, Chattery Community Hospital because what we noticed was that, and I had it happen to me, I used to be uh, the administrative assistant at the front desk or the receptionist at Northwest Community Action. And we had people come in and they, they would uh, say, oh, I don't feel well. I'm, I feel like I'm having a heart attack. Please, please call the emergency unit. And I did. And then the um, paramedics would arrive and they would say, oh, well, we recognize this person because they'd done it before, because they wanted to get in, you know, out of the cold and get something to eat and get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of care. So we work with the hospital and set up closer to home, and we do serve hot lunches uh, from 11.30 to 12.30, Monday through Friday. So if, if anybody's ever interested in volunteering there, please give us a, give us a call. Um, it is kind of a small facility, so 
we like that you schedule that in advance because we can only usually accommodate a couple of volunteers. Um, it, it has a little dining room that has seating for six people. And in that hour, we have to cycle people through kind of quickly. So uh, in some days, we, we serve 30 people in that little lunchroom. So um, if, if you're interested in volunteering, go ahead and give us a call at 432-3393. My extension is 52. And I, I guess that's all I had for you people. I, I want to thank you all for coming out, though, today to honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And, and for your uh, spirit of community service. Thank you very much, Breck. And I want all of you children out there to remember to tell your parents tonight that there's a great opportunity for them to volunteer in Shadow, Monday through Friday, every week, at Closer to Home. Can you do that? All right, that's my subversive element. Now I'd like to invite up to the stage Shane Harris and Shelley Robinson. I've been messing her name up all morning long. And they're from Job Corps, and they're gonna talk a little bit about Martin Luther King and his personal impact on their lives. All right. I am happy to join with you today and fill up what go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. This moment decrease came as a great light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of injustice to end the long night. On January 15th, 1929, Martin Luther King was born in Atlanta, Georgia. His birthday became a national holiday. One of the most, King remained one of the most famous speech in American history. He started with prepared remarks saying he was there to cast a check for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. schools here in Shadron. And we prepared a number of songs that we would like to sing for you. We hope that you will join us and sing along. Before we sing, however, I do want to take just a moment and thank Dr. Nisham for asking us to be part of this celebration. Dr. Nisham and everybody else who had a part of it. The boys and girls and I have been singing about and learning about Dr. Martin Luther King the last couple of weeks, and they truly have been fascinated by his story. They've learned lots, and I know they have a renewed appreciation for who he is. Um, the first song we're gonna do is a song called Sing About Martin. Does that sound good, boys and girls? Yeah. You know that one? Okay, everybody sit up nice and straight and tall for me. Would you do that? It has sign language, but it's very simple, and so I'll share that with you. If you could all do this with us, the first thing you need to know is sing. And would you guys stand up, please? These are our helpers. They're going to lead us. 
These are the sixth grade students from Shadron Middle School. We're really lucky that they could join us. Sing looks like this. Sing. Can you do that? And the first phrase is sing about Martin. Can you do that? Sing about Martin. And then I'll do the I'll do it first and then you guys copy me. The next one is sing about caring. Sing about peace. Sing about peace. And I told the boys and girls, put your hands out like you're going to get a nickel, and then just bring them in towards you and go like that. All around the world. All around the world. Sing about Martin. Sing about Martin. Sing about loving. Sing about loving. Sing about peace. Sing about peace. All around the world. All around the world. You got it. You ready? the auditorium into two. Well, I'll tell you what, let's all do this first. I want you to put your hand out like you're getting a nickel again, and you're going to take your other hand and it's going to be your player. And I think the boys and girls kind of know this, so hopefully you can kind of join in as we go. Are you ready, boys and girls? Yeah. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, K-I-N-G, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, K-I-N-G, Martin Luther King. Three things about which Martin Luther King was very passionate was justice and equal rights and liberty and freedom. Do you remember that part? Yeah. Here we go, ready? Justice, equal rights, liberty and freedom. He had a dream that we shall overcome. Justice, equal rights, liberty and freedom. He had a dream that we shall overcome. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King. Now this time, you guys get to do what we just learned. I want you guys to try this for me. Are you ready, guys? Follow these guys. They really know what they're doing. Ready? Brother, 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 brother.
The fourth graders, um, there's five students here. We found a poem that was really beautiful that we thought spoke well to Dr. Martin Luther King, and I have four fourth grade students who would like to recite that for you. In Memory by Kathleen Northrup. It took a wise man to dream big, to dream great, to talk of peace, brotherhood, and love when all around us hate. It took a strong man to stand tall, to speak of liberty and justice and dignity for all. He saw a great country with some growing stuff to do. He dreamed of a better world where freedom could ring true. And so today, and so today, what we'll gather for a birthday celebration for a wise, for a good man who who wanted to train. He wanted to change the mind and heart of a nation. <coughs> of liberty and brotherhood, today we sing as we celebrate the memory of Martin Luther King. We, uh, through the, uh, over the past couple of weeks, we, uh, did some studying about Martin Luther King and talked a little bit about the Underground Railroad, the plight of the Negro slaves in the early 1800s. And we would like to share with you now a story that I know the boys and girls are all anxious to hear. Um, it's called Follow the Drinking Gourd. And back in the days of slavery in the early 1800s, there was a gentleman whose name was Pegleg Joe. And Pegleg Joe was out to help the Negroes escaped to freedom. That was a long, long trip from the southern United States up into Canada. And what he did was he went on the plantations and taught the um, slaves the directions that they needed to take through a song. So that way, nobody would be on to him. Music was a very important part of their lives and they just, the owner thought, well, they're just singing another song. But truly, they were singing the way to freedom. And this is called Follow the Drinking Board. Don't forget to sing with us, boys and girls. Joe, who did what he could do to free the slaves. Joe had a plan. He'd use hammer and nail and saw and work for the master, the man who owned the slaves on the cotton plantation. Joe had a plan. At night, when the work was done, he'd teach the slaves a song that secretly told the way to freedom. Just follow the drinking board, it said. Joe's song and they sang it low. Stars. 
taking their little son Isaiah, old Hattie, and her grandson George, Molly and James set out for freedom that very night, following the stars at the drinking board. They ran all night through the fields till they crossed the stream to the woods. When the daylight came, they hid the trees, watching and listening for the master's hounds set loose to find them. But the dogs lost the runaway scent at the stream, and Molly and James and Isaiah and old Hattie and young George were not found. They hid all day in the woods. At night they walked again, singing Joe's song and looking for signs that marked the trail. The river bank makes a very Sometimes berries to pick and corn to snatch, sometimes fish to catch, sometimes empty bellies to sleep on, sometimes no stars to guide the way. They never knew what lie ahead. There was danger from men who would send them back, and danger from hungry beasts, but sometimes a kind deed was done. One day, as they hid in the thicket, a boy from a farm found them, and in a bag of feed for the hogs in the wood, he brought bacon and cornbread to share. Singing low, they traveled on. Joe signaled low with a hoot like an owl. Then the door opened wide to welcome the freedom travelers. They were rushed through the house to the barn, for the farmers knew that the slave catchers were near. A trap door in the floor took them under the barn to hide till it was safe to move on. Then Peg Leg Joe went back to the river to meet the others who followed the drinking lord. Shelves. 
There they rested for many days and healed their wounds. Soft beds, full meals, new clothes, hot baths, washed away some of the fear and the pain. Isaiah smiled. When they were strong, they traveled on again from house to house on the underground trail, still following the drinking gourd north. Sometimes they traveled on foot and sometimes by cart. The wagon they rode near the journey's end carried them to mar carried food to market and the runaways to freedom. like that boys and girls yeah that, thing, that was a good story um, our last song today is a song about of course dr. Martin Luther King and the sixth graders are going to bring around some tambourines I think most of the students know just when it is that we're supposed to play that tambourine do you remember when that is boys and girls yeah I knew you would so you know what um, to have the, the people in the audience, this is a very simple song, and I think if I give you a few heads up here, you could join us on this one as well. The first verse says, he wanted everybody to have the same freedom. And that just repeats itself. The second verse says, he wanted everybody to join hands together. And finally, the third verse says, let's all love each other and live like brothers. Are you ready?
do you remember giving me that piece of music? Yeah. I didn't even, I had forgotten until I just looked out at you, but it's been a number of years ago. That song was given to me by Mrs. Schmidt, so thank you. <laughs> and a great hand of applause for our communist, Mrs. Hastings. Thank you so much for helping us out today. And again, thank you for asking us to be part of this celebration, and we will look forward to doing it again. All right. Thank you. I am almost ready to say thank you for coming and have a wonderful afternoon. But I want to say a couple things first, and that is, this is Chris Dickerson. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very much. And Lou Alcorn and Bill Conville deserve a special thanks. One of the things I found is when you ask people to do things for Martin Luther King Day, they invariably say yes. So thank you very much for that. If you haven't got a button, feel free to pick them up on your way out. Show the Johnstone that we have some that we'd like to send you home with. So with that, enjoy Martin Luther King Day and think about doing things for others. <laughs>